Smart meter opt out should be free. 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 Smart meter opt out should be Class action suit. 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 We're telling PG&E that we don't care about their 17% increase in profits. We care that they don't keep their customers safe with their gas and electric um, deliverance. Uh, the San Bruno explosion and meanwhile countless people for the last two and a half years have been getting sick from smart meters and PG&E has not made any appropriate response. We've asked for community-wide opt-out program. We've asked for smart meter free zones around people who are sick. We're asked for real analogs when we've gotten first generation smart uh, meters. And PG&E just continues with their deceptions and lies. All they care about is profit. Their filthy, grotesque profit. What do you want them to do? I want them to do a health, independent health investigation and a environmental in re, import repack report and meanwhile to stop smart meters have a moratorium now and specifically answer to people who are sick now that's the most important people who can't live in their houses people who are still paying their mortgages and their taxes and they can't live in their houses or they're living in half their houses part-time and still having a myriad of physical symptoms Smart meter opt-out should be free. Smart meter opt-out should be free. Smart meter opt-out should be free. Our health is not for sale. Our health is not for sale. Thank you. Have a good day. Our health is not for sale. Our health is not for sale. Our health is not for sale. For meltdown hazards at our reactors, our nuclear reactors, you have a wider grid, you have a more vulnerable grid to hacking, cyber warfare attacks, power surges even. And all of those things, if the electricity goes down, reactors can melt down because they need electricity, off-site electricity to keep them cool. That's why we had the Fukushima meltdowns. They lost electricity to the reactors and the fuel. So we are saying PG&E, with the culture of criminal negligence, really does need to shut down Diablo Canyon nuclear reactor and have a wired electrical grid, not a wireless electrical grid with wireless meters. Is that a responsible corporation, publicly responsible corporation? I don't think so. I don't think so. So what do you think should happen? Do you think they should I, I think the PUC needs to, to uh, regulate them in the first place, but also the government, uh, federal government needs to stop the loopholes here. That they're, that they're obviously benefiting by. They need to pay more taxes. That's the bottom line. Assemblyman Cherry Hill is offering a bill today. Do you know about that? About the I heard about bill? it. I don't know exactly what's in it. I don't know all the details of it, but yeah. essentially it would watch the incentives, the bonuses that executives get, and if something happens and the company has to pay fines or something, they would have to give those back. Would mm -hmm. you be in support S of that? Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, it does indeed. Yeah. How do you feel about the smart meters? A lot of people say they don't want to have to pay to opt out with the smart meters. Is that a concern for you? It is a concern, yes. Uh, the PG&E is not telling the whole truth about the health risks of the smart meters. And that, that can be documented online. In fact, I can give you, if you would like, this. I mean, you can go to YouTube. There's an hour and 45 minute documentary with a professor from uh, Monterey Naval Institute, Graduate Studies. Uh, he's a uh, st statistician, an environmentalist, and uh, he can, you know, he, he'll just lead you right through how uh, PG&E dissembled in their representation of the health risks of all this. What's That's your name? Uh, I'd rather remain anonymous. Right okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That works. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Shareholders will have to decide for themselves whether or not they want to continue paying for earnings-based bonuses. This bill, however will make sure that ratepayers do not foot that bill. The second part of this legislation is to increase the penalties for corporate officers 
to a maximum of $1 million for each violation. Existing law places the limit on $20,000, which is too low of a deterrence for executives making more than a million dollars in base pay and millions more in bonuses and stock options. Raising the penalty to a meaningful level will help ensure that executives focus on safety in addition to profits. The third and final part of the legislation will require top management to return performance bonuses if the company is penalized for safety violations. Since Mr. Darby's departure as CEO, PG&E has been assessed nearly $58 million in penalties by the California Public Utilities Commission for safety violations that occurred during his tenure. If my bill were in effect, Darby would have been forced to give a portion of his bonuses back to shareholders. PG&E was fined $38 million last year for the fatal gas explosion in Rancho Cordova on Christmas Eve in 2008. This bill will prevent executives from parachuting away scot-free when violations occurred under their watch. Executives will be on the hook for any violations that occurred in the previous five years. This only applies to directors and top executives or about 25 out of the 20,000 hardworking people at PG&E. We cannot change the past, but these reforms will better align the incentives of corporate management with their customers and with their shareholders. As current CEO Tony Early told the San Francisco Chronicle Saturday, if you provide great service to customers, the financials will fall into place. This legislation will put some checks and balances in place to ensure that PG&E executives stay focused on great service for the years ahead. Thank you very much. Be happy to answer any questions. Mindy Spratt, turn. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Mindy Spratt, we're turn the Utility Reform Network. We have been representing California consumers for close to 40 years and including in that um, representing PG&E customers as well. Today, in this building, shareholders are likely to approve a $10 million pay package for new CEO Tony Early. He was paid close to $3 million for his first four months at PG&E. Now, we'll grant you, he's got a Herculean task in front of him to clean up PG&E, and we hope he does it. But that doesn't justify bilking consumers for this kind of money. Not when the average worker in this country makes approximately $34,000 a year. If shareholders want to reward executives, sorry, for good financial performance, well, shareholders can pay for it. The fact is that PG&E's been putting people before profits for far too long, and the PUC and the legislature, 180 times. Number two, increased penalties. This is going to mean increased accountability for executives when they mess up. If corporations are people, surely corporate executives are people, and they are people who should be held responsible when they mess up. Again and again, when Turn has challenged these kinds of salaries, we're told that's what it costs to hire quality people. Really? That's what it costs? Peter Darby, the CEO under whose watch San Bruno happened, was paid about $30 million in his first five years at PG&E, and in the year of the explosion, his salary actually went up um, approximately $50,000 to $1.2 million. But that brings us to the third thing that Assemblyman Hill is proposing, which is the return of ill-gotten gains. Don't get the wrong idea from the salary I mentioned. Darby's pay package was far more than $1.2 million. In fact, bonuses and stock options brought it much closer to $10 million. Most of us obviously don't get that much for doing our jobs right, let alone for doing them wrong. And he's certainly not the only one at PG&E pulling in that kind of money. The CFO, Kent Harvey, $3.31 million. John Keenan, the COO, $2.69 million. This is money coming out of our pockets while they ignore pipeline safety, while they ignore record keeping, while they ignore all the things that are important to their customers. The California Public Utilities Commission has not been holding executives accountable. Someone needs to stand up for consumers and we're happy that Assembly Ben Hill is doing that. Thank you. We're here today on behalf of 
nearly four million Californians who are saying no to extortionate and illegal opt-out fees. 56 local governments now, representing nearly four million people, have opposed this current project. We're not only here to say that there should not be any fees to decide to retain your analog meter. We're here to say that the entire smart grid must be shut down. It is stupid for our health. It is stupid for our national security. It is stupid for our privacy. Something so vast that one of the biggest technological rollouts in our history, and yet we had no opportunity to comment or to shape the project. It was just forced on us. We're here to say, take back your power from the utilities. Take back your power from PG&E. And uh, we, we thank the, uh, the creators of the film that's going to be released next month, hopefully, called Take Back Your Power, a uh, group of filmmakers from Vancouver. This uh, movement has really gone national and international. There are now hundreds of groups, uh, grassroots organizations, fighting the smart grid all over the world, and the same kinds of uh, effects are being reported in Australia, in the UK, in Canada, all over the United States when smart meters go in. We will also be presenting PG&E with uh, a petition, a couple of petitions actually. One, we have nearly 3,000 signatures. Uh, begun by a woman named Vosh Smith who's here with us today. Uh, we're going to be presenting that to PG&E. Three, nearly 3,000 people are saying, no, we don't want to pay these fees. You should discontinue these fees. They're not ethical. We also have over 400 signatures on a, on a petition of people refusing to pay the fees, even if it means that their electricity is going to be shut off. And that's what PG&E has promised to do. These are just the tip of the iceberg of a widespread frustration and opposition to, to choice, to free choice. It's almost like the tobacco industry, right when the cancer scientists were making the link with lung cancer, saying, oh, you have to smoke this pack of cigarettes a day, and if you don't, we're going to charge you. We should not have to pay for our health. We should not have to pay for our privacy, and we should not have to pay for our safety. That's what we have the Public Utilities Commission for, and they are failing miserably to do their job. After 10,000 people, more than 10,000, have come forward saying, we're suffering from health effects, and there is no investigation, there are no public hearings. You know, we need, uh, we need a community opt-out for those communities, those cities and counties where the democratically elected governments uh, do not want the smart grid. Uh, Fairfax, by being uh, assertive and aggressive with the utility and uh, passing a law prohibiting their installation, has managed to, for the most part, stave off installation. Uh, there are many parts of Marin County, uh, West Marin. There are other pockets around the state where neighbors have gotten together and said, we're going to have a smart meter free zone. We're not going to allow the utility to come in. So we say no fee, we say charge the utility. Yeah. We say no fee, charge the utility. 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 So um, I hope you guys have all had a good week. I've had an okay week. Um, you know, we basically, I'm, I'm director of StopSmartMeters.org and because of the website, which gets thousands of hits every day, we get uh, emails and we get calls from around the country. So, you know, this week on Monday, uh, I got a call from an attorney in North Carolina. He's representing a woman who is uh, 85 years old. She's lived in her farmhouse for her whole life. It's been passed down from, uh, from generation to generation. And uh, the utility in North Carolina installed a smart meter the other day. And after a couple days, uh, things started sparking. And uh, her appliances started switching on and off and, and going crazy. 
and uh, she came, she was coming home from a friend's house and saw her entire home engulfed in flames. She's lost everything apart from her life. Uh, she's trying desperately to get her life back together. Uh, and the attorney is suing the utility there. And this has happened all across the country. We've documented hundreds of fires that have started either from the smart meters being installed incorrectly or from some fault within these cheap plastic devices that weren't ready for widespread installation despite the fact that they were given the go-ahead by the, by the PUC. On Tuesday, I got a call from a woman who lives on the East Coast and she, uh, she's, a, she's a student, she's studying to pass the bar to be a lawyer and all of a sudden, you know, she, one day, uh, she lives in a condo complex, one day the utility company came by and replaced the meters, she's like, oh, okay, meter upgrade. Well, she started getting these headaches and uh, she started getting nauseous, she started uh, having difficulty sleeping. She didn't know what was going on, and someone mentioned to her about uh, the smart meter and the, and the campaign against them, and so she went on some of our websites, realized what was going on, and she's purchased uh, dozens and dozens of sandbags and cinder blocks and piled them on the wall opposite this bank of meters. And, you know, she, she's in the middle of studying for the bar, she can't go somewhere safe, she has to make do with where she, where she is. And uh, she has, I think, 30 smart meters on the side of her building. And this, of course, violates the FCC regulations that say meters must not be co-located -lo co and meters must not be closer than 20 centimeters to any individual human being. And I sort of thought about this woman and you know, gave her the best advice that I could and realized that we're at war here. When, when you have to put up defenses within your own dwelling uh, to defend against an invisible toxin that was put there without asking you, uh, when you have to uh, kneel in your own, your own home and put sandbags up uh, to defend against uh, an attack, we are at war. And uh, this is only gonna get, this is only gonna get worse. Wednesday, I heard from a woman in Arizona who ha was so badly affected by the smart meters uh, that she had to flee. She's been living in her car. Um, she's been camping in some very unsafe locations. She knows of others in the same situation, uh, other women who've been raped because uh, they have to sleep in uh, areas that are remote uh, in their cars. And this is not acceptable. When we allow uh, our human rights to be violated when we allow people to suffer from electrosensitivity and chemical sensitivity without taking responsibility for protecting them that is a violation of human rights and the uprise the rising up of electrosensitivity uh, because of the smart grid is an indication of how toxic our environment has become uh, this is an environmental effect it is an environmental toxin uh, as is uh, the level of chemicals that we're dealing with and the, the increase in the number of people who are suffering is a direct result of the polluted environment that we live in. And that environment has gotten significantly more polluted with electrosmog uh, since we've uh, had the smart meter mesh network installed. In fact, if you, if you have a device that measures radio frequency, the most significant increase, the most significant source is from the smart grid. And that's a fact. On uh, Thursday, a couple weeks ago, uh, it was announced that William Devereaux, who you might remember was the head of the smart meter program here for PG&E, uh, was not in fact acting alone when he falsified his identity in order to spy on uh, private email listservs, private groups uh, opposed to this program, to infiltrate them under the fake name Ralph Floria. He said, I, oh, I'm an activist from Oakland. I'd like to help you guys out. What can I do? And he was outed by his email program. He was outed by technology. And it turns out you know, that this uh, executive was not acting alone, that he had the support and, and awareness uh, of the whole top PG&E executives. And that is the subject of an ongoing CPUC investigation where there may be uh, large and hefty fines levied to, to PG&E.
And they deserve it. They deserve criminal prosecution for behaving in this way. This is a predatory company that takes our health and takes our safety uh, and, and in, internalizes it into their own pocketbook. And it's, how long are we going to put up with that? We need to take back our power from PG&E. Yeah. 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 I want to tell a, a story a couple nights ago. Um, I was camping out in Big Basin, and uh, Big Basin State Park is down north of Santa Cruz, and uh, over the past couple of months, they've installed smart meters in the campground. So if you go and, you know, you want to get away from the city, you want to get it out of the electro smog, you go and, 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 you know, camp at Big Basin, and there's a picnic table, and right there, there's a smart meter. And uh, this is within feet of some of the last remaining old growth redwoods anywhere in the world, here in Northern California. And we've already seen what uh, smart meters can do to vegetation. Uh, people have been sending in uh, photos and video of uh, the effects on, on plants and on shrubs and on trees. But of course, nothing is sacred. Life is not sacred uh, when you are pg e when you are an investor-owned utility without a soul. Yeah. And so I was camping the other night in the park, and it's the middle of the night, it's about 12.30, and we hear this growl. <laughs> we sat up, bolt upright in our tent, looked around, and there's a mountain lion about four feet from our, from our tent. And uh, it's not happy. It's growling, it's pacing, it's circling our tent. And I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, this mountain lion's clearly upset that they've installed smart meters in his territory. Yeah. And there's yeah. probably some radio frequency ID yeah. tag tracking and surveilling the mountain lion, every move it makes, you know, radiating it with, 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 with uh, microwave pollution around its neck. Yeah. It's probably pretty angry, you know? And I was like, I relate. <laughs> yeah. we, re we can relate to that mountain lion, you know? We, we don't want to be constantly surveilled we don't want every movement, every uh, appliance we turn on to go in some data bank so that some third party corporation can take it and sell that data and make money off of us. That is just not right. That is unconstitutional, it is illegal. Uh, we demand a halt to it. We've made progress, continuing to be out here for two years, continuing to protest. When this program started, it was, it was so-called mandatory to have a meter. But because of public pressure, because of opposition, we have a choice now. Unfortunately, that choice is uh, at a cost, which is we maintain is illegal. The California Public Utilities Code states very clearly that you cannot charge extra for utility service based on a medical condition. And electro hypersensitivity is a medical condition. You can also uh, not charge extra for utility service based on uh, to protect your safety. And this is a threat to safety. So PG&E thinks that they're charging extra for to opt out. These fees are not going to hold up. People are going to refuse to pay them. Uh, it is just not acceptable. When a state like Vermont, which last week passed a, a law uh, giving people the right to say no to smart meters, completely free. We want that in California. We deserve that in California. We deserve that everywhere. California no fee 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 So I'm just going to wrap up and 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 say you know that we're here we're saying no to the smart grid agenda we're saying no to smart meters if they, are, if they are allowed, the powers that be, to dictate our future, we are going to have a future where every single electronic device is staring at you, is spying on you, is radiating you, is reporting your every move back to a centralized database. Uh, we're going to have a future where we remain in denial about uh, the, the pollution that we are uh, burdening our environment with and instead covering it up with fake geoengineering solutions that are causing problems of, of their own. We're gonna have a, a future where Big Brother spies on everyone, what, whatever you do, even in your own home. Uh, 
we're going to have a future where decisions that uh, affect our finances and our health and our safety and our communities are made behind closed doors without any consultation. Uh, but we say no to that vision today, and we're out here continuing to say no and demanding uh, uh, not only just a electrical grid without smart meters, but uh, an entire reevaluation of the electrical grid. It is fairly nightmarish as it is already, from the mining of the coal to the burning uh, of the coal, which uh, creates mercury pollution and climate change, to uh, the, 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 the transmission of that electricity uh, using high tension power lines that gives kids leukemia to the effects of dirty electricity and, uh, and radio frequency pollution within our own home. Uh, there is a, an option to this nightmare. There is a choice, and that is uh, local, locally generated distribution. We need to relocalize our power supply. We need to take back our power from these guys who are raping our wallets and take back the power. So. I'd like to uh, I'd like to introduce at this point uh, Sudi Skull from No Smart Meter San Francisco. Thank you all for being here. Uh, it's fantastic. There's people inside protesting uh, the shareholder meeting today, and uh, our message to the shareholder shareholders really is that you know we have a lot in common. If you want to make money off of selling electricity and natural gas. You need to do so in a way that doesn't generate a wave of class action lawsuits seeking compensation for the very real health damage, for the very real safety uh, risks that they have burdened our, our communities with. So we and the shareholders actually have more in common than they might think at this point. We've been in touch every day with those people who are suffering uh, health effects in their own homes who are uh, changing their lifestyles to avoid going into towns where smart meters have been deployed because they are in so much pain, they cannot, uh, they cannot do the things that they used to do that makes life enjoyable or even possible in some, in some respects. So we're here today to say the shareholders need to listen, they need to do what's right for the company, they need to do what's right for the public, and they need to reevaluate the smart grid, they need to drop the extortionate and illegal opt-out fees, and they need to come clean and have a fresh break and really come around and put this an end to this smart grid. Let's give it up. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Josh is amazing. His uh, smart meter blog and his savvy handling of the media to help to make Stop Smart Meters an international movement. And now I want to introduce Leslie. Leslie is the other co-chair of No Smart Meters San Francisco. We have worked tirelessly together for two years. Behind the scenes, we have initiated most protests and her large professionally executed banners have helped to give us a media presence. Despite the fact that way back when, most people thought smart meters were digital parking meters. Thank you, Leslie. So we are here today to fight for our democracy, to take back our power, and to fight against rampant criminal capitalism gone astray. PG&E is the largest utility monopoly in the world, having made a 17% increase in profit this last quarter. Where do their profits come from? We, the public, pay them our hard-earned money, exorbitant rates forced upon us by the CPUC. Rates to cover gas pipe safety, and yet senior executives on the slide siphoned $100 million slated for gas pipe safety, and the tragedy of San Bruno occurred. Our rates increased another 1.5% to cover the smart meter program. And PG&E had the gall to consider asking for more money to, to cover additional costs to pay to the, for the public's resistance. And now we have to pay to opt out an extortion fee to claim our free right to choose to say no to smart meters. All of this so PG&E can make 17% more money. PG&E executives must be cackling all their deceptions and shams worked. 
but the public is waking up, all of you here, the anti-smart meter activists, the occupiers, the 99 percenters, I say we are the freedom fighters, a term coined during the American Revolution, when an individual's right to freedom, privacy, and security took precedence over a corporation's right to make filthy, grotesque amounts of profit. The smart meter smart grid is the cornerstone to controlling and weakening an already overwhelmed and complacent populace. The controversy over smart meters initially started in Bakersfield because of doubling and tripling of customers' utility bills, and then it moved to the arena of health. Josh has shared some of these stories. These are lost lives, many of them, many of them, many of them. And unfortunately, this public health emergency will only worsen with time. I am one of these people. I live part-time in part of my house under duress with a myriad of physical symptoms. But increasingly, I have become alarmed by the cybersecurity and privacy risks that the smart meter smart grid pose. Cyber expert Richard Clark and ex-CIA director James Wolseley state, and I quote, there is a 100% chance in the next three years, within the next three years, that the smart grid will be hacked. The system can be programmed to self-destruct so that we won't go back to the pre-web 1970s, but instead to the 1790s before the electric grid existed. End of quote. These experts go on to say that instantly we will not have electricity that pumps our water, that keeps our food cold, and gives us electronic access to our money. Social chaos, starvation, and death will ensue. Additionally, there will be the imminent likelihood of nuclear plant meltdowns, much like Fukushima. By creating and installing the smart grid, we have done the terrorist work for them. Additionally, make no mistake, the big brother, George Orwell's 1984, is here. Most major appliances sold now have chips in them so that all of your appliances will communicate with PG&E. This is called the Home Appliance Network. And it, even General Petraeus, that led the Afghanistan invasion, calls the Home Appliance Network an invasion into our privacy. Our comings and goings will be monitored, and it doesn't take much of a stretch to know that our conversations will no longer be private. Technocracy is here. Where is our supposed democracy? So, freedom fighters, we must ardently and unceasingly take back our power and fight for our freedom. And thank you so much for being here. We've got, we've got Vosh Smith here. Vosh, you want to come forward? So there's been a lot of online activism uh, against the fees. We have uh, signatures here. We have uh, a petition to present to PG&E. Do you want to say a little bit about uh, why you felt like you had to do this and uh, why you're here today? I just felt compelled to start this petition when I originally heard that PG&E was going to let us opt out. I thought, great, they heard us. Isn't this wonderful? But then the PS was, and it's going to cost you $75 plus $10 a month. I'm a homeowner. That's 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 quite a crunch for me right now. The people who rent, every time they rent, every time they rent, then they would have to pay $75 plus every time they move, which is not fair. I was able to prevent the meter from being installed, so I kept my analog meter. I see no reason why I should have to pay $75 to keep the equipment that I already have. So I was outraged, so I just said I'm going to start a petition. I started the petition and I was blown away by some of the comments about hearing how so many people, so many people's health were compromised when the smart meter was put into their home. So I have posted 3,000 signatures here and I'm hoping that PG&E will let me deliver it today. Awesome. So this is, <clears throat> this is the type of activism that is, uh, that is winning the day for us. 
In addition to the nearly 3,000 signatures that Vosges uh, will be presenting to pg e in just a minute, we have also about 400 signatures of people who are refusing to pay the fees whatsoever, even if it means their electricity is disconnected. So in a moment, we're going to go and we're going to try and deliver these petitions to pg e and uh, we'd love it if you'd all come with us. We have uh, some more words from Paul Kangas here. In Germany, they've abolished PG&E. Did you know that the German people have shut down the nuclear power plants in Germany? They've got half of them shut down, and here's how they did it. They did it by installing millions of solar panels on the roofs of private homes in Germany and feeding the electricity onto the grid. They noticed they get as much energy now from solar and wind as they did from nukes, so they shut down half the nukes. They're going to shut all the nukes down in Germany by 2022. Yeah. Now here's the secret of how they did it. How many of people know what a feed-in tariff is? A feed-in tariff. You ever heard of a feed-in tariff? This is a law that was written in Germany 25 years ago by a guy named Hermann Scheer. When he was a college student, he said, we can run the whole country of Germany on solar power. Everybody said, no, you can't. Go do your homework. He did his homework, and he proved scientifically you can run the whole country of Germany on solar power. Then he went to the legislature and he said, I want 100,000 houses put up with solar power on the roofs to prove that we can do this. The legislature passed a law, the feed-in tariff law, to pay homeowners to put up solar panels. And that's why Germany became the greenest nation on earth, which it is today. The PG&E companies in Germany sued Hermann Scheer. They sued to stop this law in Germany. They sued at the state level. They sued at every state level they could. They sued at the federal level. They lost. They lost. They lost at every single level they sued to try and stop the law. So I have a petition if you'd be interested in signing it. This petition is to abolish PG&E. Abolish PG&E. Abolish PG&E. Abolish PG&E. Abolish PG&E. PG now, the, the nice thing about this law is it, they can't stop it. It is inevitable that we can replace, abolish PG&E with solar panels. Everybody should get a solar panel. I bought this one at Costco. You can buy a really nice outfit at Costco, a battery, lamps, and solar panel for $250. It's not an ad for Costco. It's just the reality of how cheap the stuff is now. And you can run your computer, your cell phone, lamps in your apartment. I don't own my own house. So what I do is I solarize what I can in my apartment. And this is how you can do it. We can actually Tell pg e we're going to abolish you, and they can't stop us because it's a democratic process. Solar panels put economic power in the hands of the working class. Solar panels empower the working class and the homeowners to abolish the utilities. In Germany, the homeowners are the utilities. They make... They're going to, the whole country of Germany is going to be 100% powered by solar and wind by the year 2030. Have you read that in the media? No, because PG&E is fighting this issue here. Los Angeles just passed a feed-in tariff. PG&E is trying to stop San Francisco from passing a feed-in tariff. To do it, they bought the PUC. PG&E controls the PUC. And members of the PUC worked for PG&E. After they quit P uh, PUC, they go back to working for PG&E. It's an inside crowd that is controlling our city. Get so, uh, if you want to sign the petition, please talk to me. Uh, let's abolish PG&E. Please. Hope for the future! Hope for the future! Hope for the future! I just want
want to say that you are right on about that. And, uh, you know, in January, we had enough of giving our money to PG&E. We went totally off the grid. We said, disconnect us. We, we uh, have three solar panels, a couple of batteries, and it's enough for our lights, our computers, our uh, few appliances. And it is definitely viable. It is completely ridiculous that we're paying money to a corporation, paying a lot of money for dirty electricity when we could have clean, renewable energy. It just it takes uh, commitment to do it. So thank you very much for making that point. Yeah, we do not need to be uh, at, you know, vulnerable in the hands of a utility company like this. This is a house I have. A friend engineer built this. This is a solar-powered house that runs off a berm basement. A berm basement caps the 7,000 degree temperature at the center of the earth. The electric car in the garage here is powered by solar. And then the battery in the electric car is so big it will power the house. Then when you drive your electric car to work, you can power the school you work at, or the hospital. You plug into the school you work at. You know, the battery in the electric car is so big, you can power the place you work. The whole state of California can be run on solar using this system. So uh, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna go and try and deliver these uh, these signatures to PG&E. We've got 376 people from around the state of California who are saying, we're not gonna pay your fee. We're gonna pay our bill, like we always have done, with our analog meter, which we always have had. And if you have to switch off our electricity to prove your point, you're, that's what you're gonna need to do. So we've got 376 people here who've signed the refuse to pay uh, the extortionate fees petition. And we've also got nearly 3,000, I understand, petitions over there with Vosges of people who are demanding a halt to these unjustified fees. So we're going to go and uh, try and chat with the shareholders and uh, give them, give them our, our you know, represent 3,000, more than 3,000 Californians. So we're waiting for PG to send someone out to speak with us. Hi, are you both? I'm both. Hi, I'm both. I'm sorry. And then uh, Renee Corey? Renee Corey is right here. Okay. And then your cameraman, both, or camera person? I should Those Mike. three can go in. Okay. And then they'll talk to the media people and they'll take your petitions. Okay. And Josh has a petition. No. Yeah, Josh has to stay up. Only allow him uh, to uh, please. Okay. Can I take this? Sure, you can take this okay. position. And who name is? Joe. Joe. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Sure. I really appreciate sure. it. Sure. So anyway, and then uh, Brian, we'll escort the uh, okay. three of you in. I can't come in and say hi. Uh, uh, they're going to be in. Yeah. Okay, and if we could get the rest to back out of the way. Uh, Joshua, go ahead. Her name, her name is Boge. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Boge. we're not allowing them in. Okay. Let her know. So I really wish I had more encouraging news to share with you. They graciously accepted the petition and um, and interviewed Renee and um, or rather Renee interviewed uh, David. Um, and basically, it was just spin. He's saying that they hear us, which I don't really feel heard. But I had a nice conversation with uh, 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 the gal who I was t told not to speak while Renee was interviewing them. And I just said, is there any way we could start something, a dialogue today, with some kind of customer advocacy where we could meet heart to heart and speak so that PG&E could at least meet us and hear us. This isn't just concerns. This is actual people are suffering. And is there any way that they would be open to creating some kind of customer advocacy where we could sit at the table and talk to one another and let us tell us let us tell them what's going on? Because he was saying that a petition is not the regulatory way to go. What he did encourage, believe it or not, is for all customers to call, that they want to hear what their customers are saying. So if we can get 10 million people to call PG&E, <laughs> That's our next step. They've been calling, you know. Yeah, we're calling. Yeah, we're calling. Yeah, we're calling. Yeah, we're calling. Says it's no more than a, a cell phone. 
the energy off the smart meat, they have the same rub. If you talk to them about cellular biology, very basic cellular biology, they don't even know what you're talking about. Well, they know. There's no doubt. They know, but it's about... The insult is, is that they keep talking about what it costs them, and it's like, well, what is it it's like us? Donald Trump saying, I have to charge you now to come into Trump Tower because it costs us to clean the building. You know, it's like when people are barely making their mortgages right now, paying their rent, people are out of work. For them to be telling me their concerns about cost is crazy. And how about and how about the smart meters? I mean, we've already been paying for those smart meters through increases in our rates. Where's the refund if we don't want to use the smart grid or use the smart meter? That's never discussed. So, and so many people are sick because of their smart meters. They can't work. There is a woman in my city that has to live in an unincorporated area. She's a professional computer software engineer. Cannot work. So you can't even pay your rent. Exactly. If you can't work because you're so sick, exactly. which means they won't get paid. Exactly. Bottom line, if enough of us get sick, and, you know this is the kind of, the kind of response that Vosh got today is typical of what PG&E has been uh, saying. You know, they'll say we want to have a dialogue with the public. We want to we want to work together with communities. And then the reality is that they come in and they force their agenda on us, and they refuse to have any sort of discussion. The only discussion that's happening is, is one way: PG&E saying you know you have to have these things or pay us a, a, an extortionate fee. I asked so. them if they would meet with. If we could form some sort yes. of, you know, committee where I would be happy to attend, speak with PG&E, and see if there's some way that we could come to some sort of compromise where they, where their customers would actually felt heard. There's no listening there at all. No listening. What do they say to that? That the that the she said she would speak to her supervisor. Was this the? Um, but I think this is really where no. we need to go because there was an um, interview in the Chronicle of Tony Early, who's the new CEO. He actually sounds like at least a better guy than Peter Darby. And he, he claims that he, and I kind of on some level believed him, wants to listen to the customers. And there should be an advocacy group that actually meets with Tony Early and meets with Helen Byrne and all the people that are the higher ups. So we're not just these suffering voices and these statistics and all that. And I think we should really be pushing for a meeting with Tony Early.